Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fun-Filled Impact Narrative. I'm joined here by my friend, colleague, iPad non-giver, uh, uh, Dr. Simon Mabin. Simon, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Mark. How really? You? I'm having some technological problems with iPads, but other than that... Right, otherwise you're in fine fettle. I am your indeed. Your fettles are fine. So, Simon, I've invited you to your own room today <laughs> uh, uh, so that you can discourse eloquently on... Uh, events uh, concerning um, Mesopotamia, no, uh, oh, Persia. Persia. Nearly right, but that's a bit of information. So Iran, what's going on in Iran, Simon, please? Nothing good, Mark, to be honest. I mean, we're, we're going to touch on Iran, we're going to touch on the UK, we're going to touch on the US and, and try and put it all together because we've got a, a real complex mess of things happening. Um, like, I guess without going back in history to, to Mossadegh and the, the 1953 coup d'etat, we don't need to do that. The, the recent spate of, of incidents stem from the, the seizure of, of an Iranian tanker. Aha! Off the coast of Gibraltar. Ah, by whom? Uh, by British really? special forces with colleagues from Gibraltar. Really? Good. Mm. Well, that's good. We, you know, we've got to stand up for ourselves in this world. And what? So the tanker was going to Syria the allegedly. Was going to Syria allegedly, which would be in breach of EU sanctions. So we're still adhering to the the, the rules, regulations of the European Union. But yeah. anyway, this this wasn't well received in in Iran, and as a consequence, you had prominent members of the Revolutionary Guard Corps and other key Iranian officials saying, "We need to strike back. We should seize our own tanker." Yeah. They've got one of ours, we'll have one of theirs. Tit for tat, tanker for tanker. Indeed. Except it didn't really work like that, did it? Uh, no, because uh, a warship was just happened to be in the area. Is that Trolling. right? Yeah, it is. There was a British frigate that went alongside uh, the, the British tanker to really ensure its security, to make sure that that, that British interests were, were safe. And there was mm. this aborted attempt uh, from the Revolutionary Guard Corps to try and seize this, this tanker. But in actual mm. fact, the, the the British frigate was able to to dissuade the the Iranians from their course of action. Right. But um, of course, yes. this is this is really ratcheted up tensions between the two. We we know there's a uh, uh, there's a long history of relations there. A long history. Back to of Mossadegh and uh, the 1950s. Mossadegh, so also, we did go back there. Eventually. Also dating back even earlier. To oh well, the, I should uh, think the so. The Anglo-Persian oil company. Yeah, yeah. So um, British efforts to, to get as much money and oil and gas out of the region as possible. Mm. Doesn't sound like the British. Not no, no. Um, but but what, no. what has happened, of course, recently is we, we've seen this, this rapid escalation in tensions between Iran and, and other world powers, the United mm. States, the UK increasingly, uh, debate about the, the relevance, the ongoing relevance of the, of the nuclear deal, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of, plan of mm. Action. And, and there's a lot of debate about what's going to happen next. Mark, mm. you've been keeping a very close eye on the, on the British uh, Conservative leadership race. The, mm. the, the future of the British Prime Minister is at stake. Well, uh, Boris Johnson and Jeremy Hunt have been talking about how they see the crisis. Yeah. Uh, what, what have they been saying about Iran and where do they position Britain? Right. Vis a vis the United States, that's taken a very hard line against Iran. Yeah, well, of the two, I mean, Jeremy Hunt uh, said the other day that if we could somehow fiddle it so that tanker wasn't going to Syria after all, we'd give the Iranians their tanker back. And that suggests to me, you're the one who knows about these issues, but it suggests to me, first of all, he was saying, I'm a diplomatic foreign secretary and I can resolve international problems. He was doing that for his internal audience, but he was also, I guess, reaffirming Britain's different nuances towards Iran. That, uh, you know, like the EU, we're kind of a, in a middle position between the man, Iran and America. Whereas uh, the former Foreign Secretary, uh, Mr Boris Johnson, would give every indication that in foreign policy issues he would take his lead from the, the, the tweeter in the White House. Mm. Is that, is that uh, well, correct? Yeah, exactly. And I think it's interesting that, that both of them were explicitly anti-war. Both really? of them said, we will not follow the United States into a war with Iran. Ah. Now, these are, of course, words and deeds mm. may, may differ. Um, we yeah, know that, um, I would believe one of the two on that, Yeah. and not the other one. I mean, the, the other complex issue, and the other, the other factor that's really escalating British Iranian tensions is the case of uh, Nazardin Zakari Radcliffe. Yeah, well. 
who's mm. whose position in an Iranian in an Iranian prison is directly due to the yeah. Well, the we know this, but she's been moved, po- hasn't she, to a, a, a health facility, apparently. Under the direct control of, of the, members of the, of the Iranian regime. So yeah. the, there's a great deal of concern amongst many who were, mm. who are working to secure her release that, that Boris Johnson mm. was the one responsible for this, and if he becomes prime minister, then we've seen what he's done with, yeah. with one case dealing with Iran. Yeah. So there are serious concerns about what he might do if he was to gain more power and more influence with Britain's role in the world. So there's a great deal of concern right now, mm. not only with Mr. Trump and how he's viewing the Iranian crisis, which is not particularly well. He's, yeah. he's not particularly... Uh, Conciliatory. Yeah. yeah. He's not holding a diplomatic line, particularly. No. Things have been very tense. Mm. And whilst he showed a, de- a degree of restraint after supposedly launching a, a strike against Iran and then then mm. taking the decision back and instead launching a cyber attack, there's not really been diplomatic overtures no. to try and reduce tensions. No. I mean, it's interesting, he gets credit for being restrained, so it's like saying he took a completely crazy decision and then partially rescinded it, and that means he must be... Um, well, exactly. He must be sane. Exactly. Uh, it's the... The world's gone mad, as, as well. I think. I someone think it, said once. Yeah, I think it, it. It certainly is in in an advanced stage of uh, uh, eccentricity, should we say, and, and a far more damaging, dangerous than that. Um, so, I mean, in this particular instance, uh, Britain um, has got this usual choice: does it follow the European yeah. more diplomatic way? And it could well be that change of leadership over the next week will show that we move further away from the Europeans on this. Is this what you're, well, exactly. you're fearing? Yeah, Britain's caught between a rock and a hard place. Iraq and a hard place. Uh, no. Taxi, anyone? Taxi? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it's worked incredibly hard on this nuclear deal. Yeah. It's worked so very hard. Diplomats and, and, and key yeah. officials spent years trying to get a deal with Iran. It got the deal and then it was incredibly frustrated mm. that that the United States would withdraw from it. That put a lot of strain on the special relationship. And at this point, it appeared like Britain would be moving closer towards Europe in the sense that yeah. there was this shared diplomatic vision for how to deal with, with political crises. Yeah, yeah. But that's not happening at all. No, well, except it was all done on the understanding that America and Europe were seeing things the same way when Obama negotiated, or, you know, yeah. uh, the party the ways has been, as always, incredibly embarrassing for Britain. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. The other thing we should say on this, on, on Trump's position vis-à-vis Iran, is that there were reports that came out over the weekend about how and why Trump is behaving in the way that he is. And there's some suggestion that, that rather than driven by concern about Iran or ideological views about Iran, he's driven by a desire for personal revenge against the Obamas. Yeah, well, you know, that would make an awful lot of sense, risking a third world war because of personal peak. Uh, yeah. So, yes, um, and uh, in other respects, so the, um, the, the, the Middle East, the Yemen crisis still looming. The Syrian, the Syrian thing has just disappeared completely off the headlines. Continues. Yeah. The Assad regime continues to squeeze all life out of opposition movements, continues to, to commit heinous crimes against its own mm. people, continues to rebuild by, by moving opposition groups around, um, demographic re-engineering to try and create a, a state that is incredibly mm. loyal but also does not have the capacity to unite against it, against mm. the regime. There's a lot happening. And the deal of the century, of course, well, was not the deal of the century. Mm. It wasn't the deal of the week. Meh. It's been um, laughed out of the room by all parties, I think. But anyway, I mean, we, we could spend a long time talking about the various issues across the region, but I think that's maybe for the next time. For the next time, but by the next time, we'll know the, uh, what the implications of Britain's change of leadership will be in the foreign field, uh, because in that uh, respect, we have potentially a prime minister whose record le- leaves a lot of questions unanswered, should we say, and we hope that the answers are going to be rather more favourable than we currently fear. So... Go on, are you going to do the likes? Oh, I'll, I'll let you do it, Mark. You do it so well. Well, um, yeah, uh, those who have been watching, uh, it's compulsory for you to apparently press this button or click a thing that says like and share, and it's on... Go on, I don't know any of this stuff. It's on... We're on... Go on. Twitter. 
We're on well, Twitter. Um, in, um, Please carry on. No, no, I've no idea what I'm talking oh, about. This is fantastic. None at all. YouTube. We're on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We're on. Instagram. We're on all these. The Instagram. Wow, that really is impressive. And your phone's and just wrong. Your phone's just wrong with your wrong. first satisfied customer. Exactly. And we look forward to joining you. Uh, we look forward very much to surviving long enough to join you again for our next episode of. The Impact Narrative. Narrative.